Today we heard from President Obama that the war in Syria will be escalated. He now has agreed to send weaponry in to assist the rebels. It's escalation, that's the proper word, because we've already been involved for quite a few months. We've been supporting the rebels for probably the past two years, supposedly for humanitarian reasons. But now there's going to be a much more aggressive approach, and we're going to send weapons. There's a few problems with this. First off, it's war. Second thing is, presidents aren't supposed to start war without permission from the people through a congressional declaration of war. And besides, it's not going to do us any good to expand in another war. And now we hear that amongst the rebels are the Al-Qaeda. The Al-Qaeda is in there as well. So this foreign policy we've been following now for so many years is backfiring on us. It's backfiring on us because guess who's helping the rebels besides the United States? The Al-Qaeda from Iraq. Before the Iraq war, there were no Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Now there is, and now they're over there helping, and we think we're going to sort this out after two years. The reason this is coming about is the uh, um, rebels are losing this war, and we've been supporting the rebels, and I don't think it's possible to pick out the good guys here. I mean, there's no way. I think we should pick out the good guys over here, the American people and American taxpayer, and what's the best for America. And what we're doing here is not best in any way. The one thing that I find rather ironic, because I was very much involved in the lead up of the Iraq war, is the language is the same. They're using the same arguments, weapons of mass destruction, poison gases, 100 people died. The, the government has done this. But you know what? They haven't used absolute facts. They haven't even used absolute language. They hedged their terms, and they said, yeah, possibly. A couple of weeks ago, our administration was admitting that some of this poison gas may have come from the rebels themselves. But 100,000 people have died over there, it's estimated. And uh, they're saying maybe 100 or so have died from gas, possibly. But who did it and when and why, and this is the red line, to me, it's all an excuse. This is, I think, sort of like what, uh, what Clinton did in 1998 to uh, get people to look at something other than the Lewinsky affair. There's a lot of scandal going on in this country, and it benefits, it benefits the president to get the people's mind off. Nothing like a scare tactic on foreign policy to get away from the scandals. So this is, I think, really a lot what's happening. Besides, this whole idea, if you think about it, why would President Assad, who's winning the war, use poison gas to kill 100 people, knowing full well what would happen if people thought he was using poison gas? There's no way. The man is not an idiot. And now the assumption is, yes, this is the case. But here, over 100,000 have been killed, but the only thing that counts are these, these 100. You know, it's sort of like uh, wondering why people aren't concerned about 100 or 200 or 300 killed on a regular basis from a drone missile. Why isn't that the red line? Matter of fact, I think the Al-Qaeda has red lines too. And when they hear that the uh, U.S. drone missiles are killing civilians, they can get pretty annoyed. But we're falling down the path of what Bush did leading up into Iraq and what Clinton did, uh, you know, back in 1998 by bombing uh, with his problems. He went and bombed Kandahar in Afghanistan. And they know about this, that this is a diversion uh, tactics. So my, my concern is what has been my concern for so long. What are we doing there? Why are we there? What will it come of? How will we get out of it? I already did that same case about Iraq, and we're, we're still messing that place up. We've actually had that backfire on us. Iraq now is an ally of the Iranians and uh, actually still, still our enemies. But a lot of people say, oh, we have to do it because this is what Israel wants. It may be. Israel may want this. I suspect that's their position. But I think that's a mistake. Not a mistake to be friends with Israel, but a mistake to do it this way. I think Israel's getting themselves into real trouble by supporting all this rebellion going on, whether it's Libya or Egypt or now in Syria and the mess we have in Turkey. This is instability. It cannot help uh, Israel. So good intention, humanitarian instincts, but really what we're doing in the real tragedy is that the neocons are winning this battle here at home and they're controlling our foreign policy. And it's tragic that they are because 
polls right now show that 68 percent of the American people say, don't go in there. We don't need another war. And, you know, and you, you think about the money. You know, we had, went through this sequester and they'd nickel and dime and cut a few things and cut a couple TSA agents for a couple hours and tried to make a big deal of slashing. But never once has the president ever hesitated to promise more foreign aid and more military aid. So that has been all a charade about cutting because there's no cutting here. This is expansion. And this, I think, is a lot more dangerous than Libya, a lot more dangerous than Egypt. Uh, Russia is involved with this, and Iran is involved. China probably is keeping their eyes on it, and it's not serving our interests at all. This is why I think it's so necessary for us as a people to once again think about the advice the founders gave us, about talking about a non-intervention foreign policy. Mind our own business. This compulsion and obsession to be involved when it doesn't even bother us. I mean, there's some in, in the Senate right now, there's the neocons in the Senate who are just shouting about why we should do a lot more and don't have incrementalism, go in there with full force. Well, I'll tell you what, the American people don't want it. We can't afford it. It's bad policy. It's not going to have, help Israel. And it's not going to help the rebels because rebels, we don't even know who they are. And if they truly are helped, it's probably going to help the Al-Qaeda. The weapons we send over there will probably end up in the hands of the Al-Qaeda and will be used against the American people. So it's time for the American people to wake up and let their members of Congress and their senators know, stop it. Why should you just sit back, let the president do these things and declare they used to pretend, well, we don't need the congressional approval. We'll get it from the U.N. and get it from NATO. Well, in this case, he just does it and nobody says anything and the money will be there. But I tell you what, having been in Washington a long time and the people that are there, except for a few, they're not going to say much. They're just going to go along with it. So it's going to take the American people to wake up and say enough is enough. We're broke. We don't want this. No wonder we're in a constant recession and no, long, no wonder that we are under constant threat by Americans being killed by the Al-Qaeda. And that is going to continue until they, we understand exactly the motives of those individuals who would like to kill Americans. And believe me, it's not because we're free and prosperous. It has a lot to do with drone warfare, occupation, and putting troops in other lands, putting on no-fly zones, and putting on uh, boycotts, and prohibit uh, prohibiting these countries from minding their own business. So it's time for us to wake up because this one could get out of hand, and that's what I fear, because eventually we're going to have a financial crisis, which will be related to this endless spending. So this is an opportunity for us to wake up. The American people are with us on this issue. We just need to get our voices heard. Thank you for listening.